This QuickMark Layout tutorial video covers BuildView Office. QuickMark Layout System includes the BuildView application. With it, you can open the architectural drawing on the tablet, zoom into the point you want to locate, tap on it, and the laser is located within seconds. We call that tap and go. We also include BuildView Office, which is a program that enables you to open the architectural file on your computer and view it on a large screen. We're going to go through some of the basic functionality to help you review the drawings. To download BuildView Office, go to www.spectralasers.com. Navigate to the QML 800 screen. There you'll find a little tab, Download BuildView Office. It requires you to register, so if you haven't already registered, go ahead and do that. You'll need to input the serial number of the device. You can find the serial number of the device on the back of the tablet. Just peel back the rubber cover. The format is five numbers, dash five numbers, dash five numbers. There may be letters in the final set of numbers. You'll get an email to download BuildView Office. There are two versions. 32-bit and 64-bit. If your computer is 64-bit, download that version. To learn what version your computer runs on, click on the Start menu, right-click on Computer, click on Properties. It indicates the operating system. If you're not sure, download 32-bit. When to get the file from the architect, launch it, open it with Build View Office. Now there are a lot of reasons to review the drawing in advance, to see if it's complete, if you need more information from the architect, if there are issues to communicate with the general contractor or contract manager, to see if there's conflicts with other trades, uh, to see if all the materials are accurately specified. It's wise to review it in advance. When you open it up, you can see that the majority of the screen displays the architectural drawing, the geometry that the architect has prepared. A tip about navigating before we go any further. BuildView Office is best worked with a mouse with a scroll wheel. The scroll wheel zooms in and out, and if you press down on the scroll wheel, you can move the drawing around. Now to orient ourselves to the screen here a little bit. Across the top, there are several pull-down menus. The first two pull-down menus are similar to other Windows-based programs, File and Edit. Beyond that, most of them tend to be specific uh, functions related to drawing. For the most part, we're reviewing drawings. Snap is an important one that we'll come back to. We're not creating drawings. But as you use this, you may find reasons to use this. On the second line of the toolbars are functions which are specifically useful for reviewing drawings. There's File, Save, Save As, Control Line, Point Mark Creation, reference line, undo, redo, save as CSV, and there's a ruler to measure. There's a measure function. Along the right side, and we're going to spend a little bit of time here because this is important, lists the layers. This drawing, like most architectural drawings, have many, many layers. There's layers for walls, interior walls, exterior walls, for sanitary, for mechanical, for plumbing, for floors, ceilings, and on and on and on. I've got only the walls selected here in the grid lines. If you go over here to the right, if you see an eye that is black, that means that layer is on. So a door, it's black and it's on. If I click on it, you can see the doors disappear. If I click on it again, they reappear. So a wall is also on. Up here on the top, this eye turns all layers on. The trouble with all layers being on is that the drawing is very busy and difficult to use. So I'm going to go to the undo function and turn that off. This other eye turns off all layers. Now the first time you do that you might panic, but there's no reason to panic. It's quite easy to turn on the layers that we had on. I'm just going to go back and do that. And then we're back to where we started. As I mentioned, the main reason to open the file is to review the drawings. And there are a lot of things you might want to learn. Um, 
In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this layer called A Area Identifier. On this particular drawing, that turns on the names of the rooms. So if we zoom in, we see there are a couple x-ray rooms. I mentioned this is a hospital. That might be useful information for laying out the walls because perhaps the walls have special requirements to be lead lined. I'm also going to turn on the layer, just as an example, called P Sanitary. This layer shows the various sinks and plumbing fixtures that might be useful for laying out walls also. While I have that one up, I'll show you how to edit a layer. So I turned on P Sanitary. If I right click on that, I can go to Edit Layers. I can change the line thickness, the line type, whether it's a dashed or dotted line. Right now it's magenta, but if I don't want it to be magenta, I could change it to a different color. You can do that to any of the layers. Another function that can be very useful is the measure tool. Now I'm zooming into a particular part of the layout here. And I notice this wall changes thickness. That's a curious thing. So what I'm going to do is select the measure tool. I'm going to select point to line. I'm going to zoom in and measure this distance is 6 inches. I'm going to measure this distance, which turns out to be 5 inches. Now that might be useful information. If I zoom back out, I see this is a stairwell. So perhaps there's a, a fire prevention code that requires that wall to be a little bit thicker. Another useful function is called Property Editor. I'm going to click on Property Editor. This will help me gather information about a particular layer. If I click on a layer, it brings up the information about the lines, the distance, the location. If I don't like this, there's another way to change the properties of this particular layer. We can click on this little box, some people call a hamburger, and edit the layer or hide the layer. I'm going to go ahead and prepare for layout. Now, when, tomorrow when we're on the job site, we could create the control lines and the control points directly in the tablet using BuildView application. But I have the drawing open, I have a large screen here, so I'm going to go ahead and do it right now. Before I get started, I'm going to change the lot color of the grid lines from blue to red to make them just a little bit easier for me to see. Okay, so what we're going to need are a couple control lines and a couple control points. Now, control lines are placed in different places. Sometimes the control lines are placed on the outside or near the perimeter, offset the grid lines. On this particular job, the general contractor wants all the subs to use the same control lines towards the center, using this line and this line. So I'm going to go ahead, select Control Line. I'm going to put an offset of 24 inches. I'm going to go ahead and place my first control line. You can see when I hover near this grid line, I have two options above or below. I'm going to select the one below. Now I'm going to put one perpendicular to that, and again, it, when I hover, it gives me choices on which side to place it. So I'm going to place it there. So now I have two control lines, and the intersection of those two control lines will be the first control point. I need a second control point. For that, I'm going to select the control line again, and I want to place a point 360 inches, 30 feet away from the first control line. Again, as I hover, I get the two choices. I'm going to put it on this side. I'm going to hit Escape to get out of the control line function. So you can see the white lines. This first intersection will be the first control point. The second intersection, 30 feet away, will be the second control point. Now I'm going to go ahead and place points there, my control points. So I click on Point Mark. Now Point Mark, when you click on it, it automatically snaps to intersections, endpoints, and midpoints. This is an intersection that snaps there. It snaps so that you can be sure you're hitting the right place. So I place my two control points. But just to show you, it also snaps on middle points and end points, and of course intersections. So now I have my control points in there. At this point, I no longer really need my grid lines. I'm going to turn the grid lines off. 
Tomorrow when on the job site, I could just zoom in and tap on the areas that I want to locate. But again, since I have the large screen and I have this program open, I'm going to go ahead and put in some of the initial points. So again, I, I select point mark. I zoom into the area that I want to lay out. In this case, we want to be careful to select the track and not the drywall because when we want to lay out the track and not the drywall. Now we can do this again in the Build View app tomorrow. It just might be a little bit easier here. Okay. Notice under point mark, as I create points, the points are all located and identified over here. When I'm done creating all the points that I wish to, I don't need to save this or export this. The points are saved in a new layer. So when I e exit the job, all I need to do to save it and the points are saved. Another function that's very useful is to place points on a curve. When we selected point mark, it snaps to intersections, endpoints, and midpoints. So it doesn't snap very easily onto a curve. But if we want to place points on a curve, select point mark, select snap, and change the snap to on entity. Now I can place points on the curve. And it's very easy. It's very easy to lay out the curve in this fashion. This concludes the basic functionality of BuildView Office with an angle toward reviewing architectural files. There's a lot more functionality in BuildView Office. Feel free to explore that on your own.